Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington, and if you're interested in finding lots of wild mushrooms, then one of the best pieces of advice that I have for you is to learn your trees. And the reason is simple. Many mushrooms are associated with particular trees in one way or another. For example, some mushrooms are mycorrhizal species, meaning they hook up symbiotically with various trees. Some mushrooms might parasitize living trees, extracting nutrients at the expense of the host tree. And still other mushrooms might exist on dead trees, helping to decompose them. We call those saprophytic mushrooms. So if there's a particular mushroom that you're interested in finding, and you find out that it's associated with a particular tree, rather than aimlessly walking through the forest with your eyes glued to the forest floor, hoping to find that mushroom, it might be more wise to first go to those ecosystems where those associated trees grow, and then look for your mushrooms. And so what I want to do for you in this video is introduce you to seven common trees that every mushroom hunter should know. And I want you to keep in mind a few things before we get started. And the first thing is that this is not going to be an exhaustive list of trees, nor an exhaustive list of mushrooms associated with these trees. You know, there are tens of thousands of species of trees worldwide. There are millions of species of fungi worldwide. Clearly, I can't cover them all. I'm just going to cover seven common trees that are really likely to yield mushrooms if the conditions are right. Also, I live in the eastern half of North America, so that's where most of these species can be found. However, I will be covering broad groups of trees, many of which can be found worldwide. So, without any further introduction on my part, let me just say thank you so much for tuning into this video. Let's go see if we can find the first tree that every mushroom hunter should know. So the first tree every mushroom hunter should know is the mighty, the very majestic, and the oftentimes very massive oak tree. So whenever I see an oak tree or I'm in an area dominated by oak trees, I know I have a good chance of finding lots of wild mushrooms. And that's because oak trees form important ectomycorrhizal symbioses with various species of fungi. But also fallen oak trees provide the perfect substrate for mushrooms that specialize in decomposition. So just a few examples of some mushrooms that you'll find in association with oak trees include hen of the woods, sheep's head, maitake, griffola frondosa, this one typically grows late summer through fall at the bases of oak trees. You'll also find chicken of the woods in the late to porous genus on dead oak trees or very weak oak trees, and you'll find that pretty much spring, summer, and fall. You'll also find honey mushrooms in the autumn months, parasitizing or helping to decompose oak trees. And you'll find medicinal mushrooms like turkey tail, Trimedes versicolor, directly on dead oak trees. Now, oak trees do form mycorrhizal associations with various fungi, so you'll find mushrooms like black trumpets growing in the forest floor underneath oak trees. You'll also find chanterelles in the cantharellus genus, and you'll find various bolete mushrooms associated with oak trees. Now there are other mycorrhizal mushrooms associated with oak trees in the Lacaria genus, and the Amanita genus, and the Rustla genus as well. So needless to say, there are a lot of mushrooms associated with oak trees. Now the one I'm standing in front of right now is the classic northern red oak tree, Quercus rubra. Now there are hundreds of species of oak trees worldwide. I'm just going to focus on this one in white oak really quickly for you. So the northern red oak tree is a very large tree that can grow to be about 100 feet or taller, and it typically lives in well-drained areas and upland slope habitats. When you look at the branching, you'll see that it has alternate branching. The leaves are lobed with bristle-tipped points, and the bark is very unique because it's fissured, but it's broken up by these smooth gray streaks that almost look like ski tracks. Now the white oak tree, which is Quercus alba, is similar in appearance. It's a large tree up to 100 feet or taller, and it can live 400 years or more. You see it in similar habitats, though it also lives in drier areas than red oak. It has alternate branching, leaves with rounded lobes, and bark that is quite light in color, typically light gray and separating into scales and plates. So as I mentioned, there are a lot of oak tree species worldwide. I encourage you to get to learn the oak trees in your area and scout out those areas all year round looking for some of the mushrooms that I just mentioned. Another tree every mushroom hunter should know is the easily seen, easily identified beech tree. And the reason I included it second in the list is because of its close relationship to oak trees. So oak trees and beech trees are in the same family of plants, and that family is Fagaceae, meaning many of those mushrooms that I just described for oak trees can be found in association with beech trees. Not always, but there is a lot of overlap. For example, although you will find Hen of the Woods mostly in association with oak trees, you occasionally find it at the base of a beech tree, and I've seen that on more than one occasion. Also, if you're interested in the Herisium genus, which includes lion's mane, bear's head tooth, and comb's tooth mushroom, then look in beech forest, because I've had a lot of luck finding these mushrooms in beech forest, specifically Herisium americanum, which is bear's head tooth. You'll also see mushrooms like black trumpets, craterellus, growing in association with beech trees. You'll also see chanterelles growing in association with beech trees, mycorrhizally. And you'll find a mushroom known as the hedgehog mushroom in the hydenum genus, growing in association with beech trees. Now the tree I'm standing in front of right now is the American beech tree, Fagus grandifolia. It's the only native beech tree to the United States. 
And this one's easily identified by its bark, which is smooth and light gray. It's one of the smoothest bark species in our woods. It's a large tree between 60 and 90 feet tall. It's found in moist soils, usually in mature hardwood forests, so we consider that a late successional species. It has alternate branching and toothed leaves that oftentimes persist all winter long. Now perhaps the most infamous fungus associated with the beech tree is one in the Nectria genus. And in conjunction with a scale insect that was introduced from Europe to Nova Scotia in the late 1800s, it's been responsible for a disease known as beech bark disease. It's been wiping out large beech trees in North America ever since. So we don't have as many large beech trees in our forest today. However, we still do have plenty and we have all those mushrooms that I just described and many more. So see if you can find any of those mushrooms growing in association with beech trees. Another tree every mushroom hunter should know is this one right here, which is the birch tree in the genus Betula. And birch trees are pioneer species, meaning they're some of the first trees to colonize an ecosystem. They're short-lived trees, and they typically live in temperate and boreal climate zones in the northern hemisphere. And birch trees are easily identified because many species, not all, but many species have papery bark, which peels off in horizontal strips. I like looking for birch trees and you should like looking for birch trees as well because they're associated with a lot of mushrooms and they're great for the medicinal mushroom hunter as well because many medicinal mushrooms can be found growing directly on birch trees. For example, the chaga fungus, Inonotus obliquius. You'll have a lot of luck finding that fungus on birch trees. It doesn't always grow exclusively on birch trees, but in the majority of cases it does. Also, the birch polypore, which is Fomitopsis betulina, that grows directly on birch trees, and I have a lot of luck finding those on black birch trees. I've also seen Trimedes versicolor turkey tail growing on birch trees, and I have a lot of luck finding turkey tail actually on birch trees. You'll also find a lot of mycorrhizal species in association with birch trees. Not all of them are edible. I mean, you'll find ones in the Cortinarius genus. You'll find lots of bolites in association with birch trees as well. Now there are a lot of birch species worldwide. The one I'm standing in front of right now is the beautiful black birch tree, Betula lenta. It's a medium-sized tree that grows to be about 75 feet tall. It's characterized by alternate branching, leaves with sharply toothed edges, and the bark is actually rather smooth for a birch. So it has horizontal lenticels, but it has these vertical cracks which help distinguish it from any other birch trees. Typically inhabits rocky slopes. You find it along streams and in moist forests. It has a strong fragrance of wintergreen whenever you chew a twig or break into the bark. So as I mentioned, there are additional birch species out there in the world and I encourage you to explore your birch forest, see what birch trees grow in your area, see if you can find all those mushrooms that I described and more. Okay, so we covered three deciduous trees so far. This will be the last deciduous tree before we move on to the conifer trees. And for the last deciduous tree, we have the graceful, the elegant, and the quite historic elm tree. And I say historic because one of those popular trees in all of American history was an American elm tree. It was known as the Liberty Tree. And the Liberty Tree was a very popular and monumental American elm tree in Boston during the pre-revolutionary war period that served as a meeting place for colonists to demonstrate their disapproval of British rule. But we're not here to talk about American history, we're here to talk about trees and mushrooms. So what mushrooms might you find growing in association with elm trees? Well, how about the very classic morel mushroom in the genus Morchella? So a lot of people have luck finding morel mushrooms growing underneath dead and dying elm trees in the spring months. Now I know you might have your favorite trees where morel mushrooms might be growing under. You might look under apple trees, you might look under ash trees, cherry trees, tulip poplar trees. All those are good trees as well, but a lot of people do have luck finding morel mushrooms under dead and dying elm trees. If you don't find morel mushrooms, or if you did find a lot of morel mushrooms and you're looking for another edible mushroom growing directly on elm tree, so the morel mushrooms grow in the forest floor away from the elm tree, but if you're looking for a mushroom growing directly on the elm tree during the spring months, but also to a lesser extent summer and fall, check out Cereopore squamosis, which is dryad saddle or pheasant back. It's a polypore mushroom that kind of smells like watermelon rind and kind of has that taste as well. If you catch it when it's really young, then it can be quite tasty. Now there are a lot of other mushrooms associated with elm trees, specifically the parasites and the saprophytes that grow directly on dead elm trees. For example, you might find the elm oyster mushroom, Hypsozygus almerius, and other mushrooms as well. Now the one that I'm standing in front of is the classic American elm tree, Ulmus americana. And this one can grow to be pretty large. It can grow to be about 120 feet tall. And as you look at the canopy in mature specimens, you'll see it's typically vase-shaped with drooping branches. And speaking of branches, it has alternate branching with tooth leaves. The bark is brownish gray with vertical fissures. And one of the key identifying features is when you look at the trunk of the American elm tree, oftentimes it's buttressed, meaning it flares out towards the base of the trunk. Now American elm trees typically inhabit moist bottomland areas, usually along creeks and streams, floodplain areas, and slopes leading down to these habitats. 
Now, just like with the beech tree, how there's a pathogenic fungus and the Nectria genus responsible for killing a lot of the larger trees, there's a pathogenic fungus responsible for killing a lot of the larger elm trees. And this one's in the Ophiostoma genus. Maybe you haven't heard of Ophiostoma, but maybe you're familiar with what it causes, and that's Dutch elm disease. So Dutch elm disease was first described in Holland in the early 1920s, and this disease made its way into North America in the late 1920s. And Ophiostoma genus works with elm bark beetles to wipe out a lot of the larger elm trees. We just don't have many mature specimens left in our forest in eastern North America, but fortunately we do have a lot of medium-sized elm trees and a lot of younger-sized specimens as well. So if you're interested in finding and foraging one of the tastiest wild edible mushrooms there is, which is the morel mushroom, I strongly recommend you get to learn your elm trees and figure out where they grow. Okay, so we just finished up some deciduous trees. Let's move on to the conifer trees. And the first conifer tree that every mushroom hunter should know is the hemlock tree in the Suga genus. So I really like exploring hemlock habitats. That's where I am right now. Notice the bark pattern around me. Notice all these leaves around me. These are all hemlock trees in the Suga genus. Hemlocks tend to grow in cool, shady ravines, usually alongside swift moving streams and rivers. Now worldwide, there are about eight to 10 species in the Suga genus. Here in North America, there are about four species in the Suga genus. Now, just to clarify, I'm not referring to poison hemlock here. So poison hemlock is a completely different plant. That's Conium maculatum. That is a deadly toxic plant in the carrot family. That's an herbaceous plant. It does not develop woody tissue like these trees right here. So this is the Suga tree, Suga canadensis, the eastern hemlock tree. Definitely not poison hemlock. So there are many mushrooms associated with hemlock trees. And perhaps my favorite mushroom associated with a hemlock tree is Ganoderma suge. So think about suge, suga canadensis, that's the eastern hemlock tree. Ganoderma suge means that it grows on suga trees. So Ganoderma suge is the reishi mushroom. This is a classic medicinal mushroom that's usually found on dead hemlock trees, though occasionally you'll find it on living hemlock trees as well. You'll also find many mycorrhizal species associated with hemlock trees in the forest floor, including chanterelles. I have a lot of luck finding the winter chanterelle, which is Craterellus tubiformis. I also find a lot of bolete mushrooms associated with hemlock trees and suillus mushrooms. And there's another hedgehog mushroom known as Hydenum umbilicatum, which I find growing in association with hemlock trees. Now, as I mentioned, there are a lot of hemlock species worldwide here in North America, about four species. The one that I predominantly find here in Eastern North America is this one, which is the Canadian hemlock tree or Eastern hemlock tree, Suga canadensis. So this is a large tree that can grow to be about 140 feet tall and can live up to 400 years or more. Its leaves are linear and flattened. And it has really small cones that are usually an inch or less long. So if you have access to an eastern hemlock tree, or any hemlock tree for that matter, I encourage you to explore those areas, explore the trunk, explore the fallen limbs, and explore the soil all around the eastern hemlock trees, and see if you can find all those mushrooms that I mentioned, and more. For the penultimate tree in this list of trees that every mushroom hunter should know, we have the pine tree, genus Pinus. So worldwide, there are over 100 species of pine. They occupy a wide variety of habitats, including boreal, subalpine, temperate, tropical, even arid woodland ecosystems. So pine trees have their evergreen needles born in bundles of two to five. Like other gymnosperms, they don't have any flowers, but they do produce seeds. And you'll find mushrooms growing directly on pine trees. You'll find them growing around pine trees in the needle litter. You'll even find mushrooms growing directly on pine cones. So what mushrooms might you find growing in association with pine trees? How about bolete mushrooms? So many bolete species are mycorrhizal with many pine species, specifically the suillus mushrooms. Typically, these have slimy caps, somewhat yellowish pores in the underside. For example, you find suillus americanus, the chicken fat mushroom that's an edible mushroom that grows in symbiosis with eastern white pine trees summer through fall. You'll also find suillus pictus, which is this beautiful velvety reddish yellow color. Some people even have a lot of luck finding morel mushrooms growing underneath pine trees. And there are a wide variety of other mycorrhizal species growing in association with pine trees. Not all of them are edible, but we have mushrooms in the Tricholoma genus, we have mushrooms in the Inosophy genus, we have mushrooms in the Cortinarius genus, and various other genera. So the one that I'm standing in front of right now is very common in the eastern half of North America. This is the eastern white pine tree, Pinus strobus. So this can be a very tall tree that grows to be up to 180 feet tall or more. The current champion in the northeastern United States is actually in western Pennsylvania at about 184 feet tall. The leaves or the needles of the eastern white pine tree are born in bundles of five. The bark is thin and smooth in younger specimen, but the bark becomes scaly and deeply fissured in older trees. And pine trees, especially the eastern white pine tree, is a pioneer species. So you see it in all kinds of different habitats. You see it in cleared land, you see it in abandoned agricultural land. You also see it planted in plantations throughout the woods. 
So of course, this is only one pine tree among over 100 different species, and I encourage you to learn the pine trees in your area and explore those habitats all year round. See what kind of mushrooms you can find growing either directly on the pine tree or growing in association underneath those pine trees. And last but certainly not least, one tree that every mushroom hunter should know is the spruce tree. Known worldwide for its use in spruce gum, spruce beer, and its early incorporation into aircraft materials before aluminum was widely available. Now we're not here to talk about aviation history, we're here to talk about trees and mushrooms. So, spruce tree is a coniferous evergreen tree worldwide. There are about 35 species here in Eastern North America. They typically inhabit the northern cooler climates, but there is one exception, which is the red spruce tree whose range extends down through the Appalachian regions into Western North Carolina. Now, no surprise, there are a lot of mushrooms associated with spruce trees, including those mycorrhizal bolete mushrooms. Is there any tree with the mycorrhizal bolete mushrooms aren't associated with? Yeah, there's a lot of trees that bolete mushrooms aren't associated with. But with the spruce tree, there are a lot that are associated with the spruce tree, including maybe everyone's favorite, which is the porcini mushroom, Boletus edulis and its relatives. So I have some luck finding Boletus edulis under spruce trees here in the eastern half of North America. You also find a variety of chanterelles, Cantharellus genus, in association with spruce trees. And I have a lot of luck, surprisingly, finding bluet mushrooms, Clytosophy nuda or Lapista nuda. So I find them growing underneath these trees, typically late summer through fall into early winter, and they're helping to degrade some of the plant material underneath the spruce trees. Now the spruce tree that I'm sitting in front of right now is one that's actually not native to North America, but it's widely cultivated and planted around the world. So this is the Norway spruce tree, Picea abies. This one is native to Central and Northern Europe, and it's a large pyramidal tree that can grow to be about 120 feet tall. And what's really unique about this tree is that it has main branches with secondary branches that hang straight down in a pendulous fashion. So it's almost like their arms sticking out of the tree with tassels of secondary branches that hang straight down. And the leaves are dark green, they're up to one inch long, and they are four-sided. Now, of course, the Norway spruce tree is just one spruce tree amongst many in that Picea genus, but I encourage you to explore the spruce trees in your area, learn them all, and see which mushrooms might be growing in association with them, either directly on the spruce trees or mycorrhizally or saprophytic underneath those spruce trees. Well, there we have it, at least seven trees that every mushroom hunter should know. And even if you don't live where I live in the eastern half of North America, let's say you live on the west coast in California, well, you do have a lot of the trees that we talked about. You do have oak trees, you do have pine trees, you have spruce trees, you have hemlock trees, and you have a lot of mushrooms growing in association with those trees. So learn those trees, explore those habitats, see what mushrooms can be found. Also, remember this was not an exhaustive list of either the trees or the mushrooms, so of course I left a lot out, but these trees and these mushrooms should definitely get you started this year. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. As always, I truly appreciate it. I encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you enjoyed this video. Head on over to Learn Your Land so we can stay in touch with each other. If you sign up for the email newsletter, feel free to follow me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, at Learn Your Land. Thanks again. Happy tree learning and happy mushroom harvesting.